What's the background to this, Simon? Um, there are a few raised eyebrows when uh, Blackburn Rovers in the Championship appointed John Dal Thomason, the Dane, and a great Dane at that. Uh, one time top player with Milan in Italy, but in management and is regarded as a big name in football. But now things seem a bit amiss because uh, the Blackburn players have a day off today and literally it is not known whether or not John Dal Thomason has quit the club or is still the head coach. We're going to get more on this. Alex Crook, Talk Sports Chief Football Correspondent, joins us live. Alex, good morning to you. What more can you tell us about this Thomason situation? Yeah, good morning, Jim. Good morning, Simon. Uh, very bizarre turn of events in the last 24 hours. I started to get some messages uh, around about tea time yesterday that uh, John Dal Thomason had left or was leaving Blackburn. I got in touch with the club. They insisted he hadn't been sacked and was still uh, under contract. That contract we know runs until 2025. I did some more digging and was told, no, as far as Thomason is concerned, it's over. He's told the players he's leaving the football club. And I think what's been happening since then, last night and into this morning, is that John Dale Thomason, along with his agent, has been negotiating his departure from Blackburn. Now, it's also interesting to hear from Scandinavia this morning that John Dahl Thomason is a potential candidate to become Sweden's new manager. So that may have a bearing on this as well. But I think ultimately he's frustrated with the situation at Ewood Park. He offered to resign actually in the summer. Um, that offer was rejected by Blackburn's owners. He was unhappy then about losing several star players, including, uh, of course, uh, Ben Brereton Diaz. Then they sold Adam Wharton uh, for big money, it has to be said, £22 million to Crystal Palace on transfer deadline day. But I think John Dale Thomason was hoping that Blackburn could at least negotiate a loan back for that player until the end of the season. That didn't happen. And then somebody that he lined up to come into the football club, uh, an American striker who plays for Orlando City, uh, Duncan Maguire, that move fell through at the 11th hour due to, quotes, uh, an administrative error. So I think John Dale Thomason has had enough. We know the Venkies who still own Blackburn, obviously very unpopular uh, when they were in the Premier League with the supporters. They've had all kinds of issues in India, assets frozen, uh, which has limited their ability to fund the football club. And I think John Dale Thomason, who took Blackburn nearly to the Championship playoffs last season, they missed out on the last day at Millwall, you may recall. I think he just feels he's done as much as he can. Right. Well, um, his... His feeling of being uncomfortable at the club uh, was certainly reflected at the weekend when he spoke after their defeat to Queen's Park Rangers. This was Thomason. It's a very serious situation, but nothing has changed. It was also very serious in the summer. Huh? Um, when, when everything changed, uh, whether suddenly it was a hand grenade uh, that changed everything uh, with the cutting of budget. and uh, There was a difficult moment, but uh, that's probably also why Steve Wackert said that uh, first and foremost uh, this season is to stay in the league, develop players. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit more ambitious. Simon, the Venkies, have, they've been uh, a somewhat controversial group of people uh, since they've been in charge of the club back in 2010. Yep. Steve Keane was appointed manager, and I remember Steve Keane, who I know pretty well, had a very uncomfortable time there. Um, and eventually there was a parting of the ways. Then there was Henning Berg, Gary Boyer was in and out, Michael Appleton was there, Paul Lambert was there, Owen Coyle was there, Tony Mowbray was there, and now John Dal Thomason is mm -hmm. there. But something is not right, is it? Um, well, you could say that about any club that's been in a Premier League that doesn't get back there very quickly. You could say something was something was wrong in this, you know, in, in Leeds United, or something's wrong at Sheffield Wednesday, or something's wrong at Nottingham Forest, or maybe they've just made bad decisions with with managers that haven't got them. You know, Nigel Dougherty owned Nottingham Forest, who was an incredibly wealthy man, put lots of money into the football club, but never got them into the Premier League. So in this instance, what's clearly happened is the Vengis have other commercial challenges. The manager doesn't like it, and he wants to leave. They should have let him gone. You know, what's the one of the worst things you can do in life is talk someone out of a resignation, because then you're forever you're forever in <laughs> in hock to them in some shape or form. And if you're talking somebody into staying into a job, it, dollars for donuts, it will come round again. And right. I never wanted to right. talk anybody out of a job. I mean, this situation where no one knows where they stand and what's going on. I, there was something similar with me and Steve Bruce. Um, when Steve Bruce had a better opportunity, or so he thought, yeah. uh, to go to Birmingham, and everyone thought that I'd fired him or he'd resigned, and what really had happened is we'd had an argument about his preparedness to go and speak to Birmingham when he wasn't allowed to by me, uh, and then he put himself in a very difficult position because I had him on nine months gardening leave, so he said he was resigning, he had nowhere to go. Right. He couldn't resign. So I don't know what that catches him in, but the point is, is that 
is this manager was talked out of a position of resignation in the summer, and we don't know the depths of that. I, you know, I Peter Taylor come to me once. I can't get the travel arrangements that I want for the team, so I'm going to resign. Does that really count as a proper resignation? I should have said, quick, give it here to me, quick. Well, I didn't. It was, I said, don't be so bloody stupid. Grow up. Well, right? uh, Stan is one of the, the the listeners this morning. Sent in a message saying, you know, it, it's a case of lightning strike striking twice because he says Rovers lost out in two players at the same time last year and what was that down to an alleged administrative error and it didn't happen they're a shambles says Dan uh, Alex I'm coming back to you in a second Luke's a Blackburn fan Luke good morning what do you want to say mate um, I think the club's being run in a really bad way like that call it that you got that message through from Stan happened with Lewis O'Brien administration error so that player couldn't even play for the whole season because Nottingham Forest took him off their books. Now, it's happened again with this American lad. He's come over from America. Blackburn uh, officially said they've signed him on their website. And it's happening again. And I, I, I understand why John Dow Thomason's leaving because the way the club is being run, it's wrong. They don't give him any funds. They got all that money from Adam Wharton. Yeah, we might have been able to use a bit of it. They give him nothing. And the thing is, I don't think any manager would want to come to that club. I've stopped going, even though I'm a season ticket holder, because I do not like it. The vibe around the club is horrible. Everyone wants the bank. He's gone. The CEO seems to be lying all the time, and everyone's just had enough of everything. It's been getting worse and worse and worse. This is why Morby left, and now John Dow Thomason's leaving as well, and I think okay. this season we could end up going down. Look, thanks for the call. Um Alex, we, we're getting more Blackburn callers as we speak. Uh, but you've got the name of an individual who could well succeed Thomason if he goes. Yeah, certainly uh, John Eustace appears to be top of Blackburn's wanted list as they plan for life after John Dale Thomason. But I guess the question that John Eustace has to answer, uh, my understanding is that he's already turned down a couple of opportunities to get back in having left Birmingham. Is this the right job for him to take? Is he not going to be confronted with the same issues that John Dale Thomason uh, is walking away from? They're 18th, I think, in the table at the moment. That caller there is obviously very worried about their status in the championship. I think it's a big decision for John Eustace, the next job that he takes, because his stock is pretty high, having left Birmingham in a decent position. But that stock can very quickly crumble. So John Eustace, the man that Blackburn want, he might take a bit of persuading, I think, to take the job. Alex, Chris is another Blackburn fan. Chris, good morning. What's your take on all of this? Seems a bit of a shambles, doesn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely shocking, to be fair. I mean, like I said, just following on from the other caller there, the Lewis O'Brien scenario, last transfer window. Uh, there was also another player in the same transfer window called Ethan Briley, who we were supposed to be signing from Rochdale. And again, the Lewis O'Brien and Briley uh, both fell through due to administrative errors. And then the rumours are, obviously, the Duncan Maguire situation just the other day. Uh, the rumours are that they, they clicked save instead of send, apparently, before the deadline. So it's just any time it comes to spending money as a club, like I said, they've got the water money, uh, it just mysteriously vanishes into thin air. Nothing actually materialises. And the only thing that we're left with is free transfers uh, and empty promises. Uh, and, and the Venkis in particular, when they first took over, there were rumours with signing David Beckham and Ronaldinho and players like that, like world-class players and, and, and names in the game. And nothing ever materialises. Just full of empty promises, poorly run, uh, and we're just left with what we're left with. JDT has left, John Dal Thomason. Uh, it was promised one project, and it's turned out to be something completely different, and they just lie constantly. And you would have, you would have continued to back Thomason, would you? I, I mean, I, he was doing a great job. We were playing decent football. Uh, and again, the, the academy at Blackburn is second to none. Like Adam Wharton, like they say, 22 and a bit million to Palace. He's come through the system. He's been with the club since he was like, what, six or seven years old? Same with his brother, Scott, who plays at the back. The academy is second to none, but you can't rely on just young kids and putting the amount of pressure that they've got on their shoulders to get that club back into the Premier League. You need backing, you need proper owners, and you need promises fulfilling to make that happen. OK, Chris, thanks for that. Alex, they're 18th in the Championship at the moment. If Thomason has gone, uh, they've got to fill that space, and you're talking about Eustace maybe doing that. Um, but certainly there are problems afoot, not for the first time disquiet about the owners. No, I mean, those uh, protests against the owners were very loud, weren't they, in their final days as, as a Premier League club? I remember that Steve King appointment being quite unpopular with the fans, but actually I think he was having a, fight, a lot of fires uh, at that time. And it's sad, isn't it? You, you think about Blackburn winning the Premier League under 
Jack Walker back in 1995. And here they are potentially uh, trying to save themselves from relegation into League One. It's been a, a dramatic fall from grace. And you have to say that the Venkis ownership largely has been a disaster. There's also talk, by the way, that not just John Dale Thomason could be leaving the football club, but the club secretary could be on his way out as well. That's never a good sign. Alex, listen, thanks for that. I mean, it, it's a constant theme. I remember this when I was at Sky, Simon, with uh, Steve Keane and everything that went with that. Uh, there was a huge amount of disquiet behind the scenes mm. and the Venkis became very, very unpopular. And yet, all these years on, they're still there. Yeah, and if you look at if you're led to believe what they what's been said, they've spent over two hundred odd million pounds on the football club. That's what they've invested or given, um, given the circumstances the club finds it in. So they've they've had it for ten, twelve years, and it's cost them twenty million pounds every single year to be told how crap they are as owners. Um, the fact of the matter is, the team um, reached its natural level to some extent. Um, Jack Walker propelled them forward. His ambition, his desire, his aspirations for his boyhood club to achieve things was the driving force. John Williams was a really good CEO. Jack Walker left them with money that John Williams managed for years yeah. from the Jack Walker estate, and then they sold to the Venkis. And yeah. the Venkis, you know, I, I couldn't make head nor tail of them as individuals when you see them in the media, but they've stayed with the football club for 10, 12 years now. It's cost them 200 million quid. If there's a queue of buyers for Blackburn Rovers that want to take it over, then let's see who they are. Because mm. it's very easy to shout them out. And I'm not I'm not coming down the side of owners because I didn't think the decision to make Steve Keane the manager was the right decision at the time. I don't think they've handled the situation very well. And the club has never been in any really good fettle no. for, for a significant period of time. Well, I can it? remember pitching up years ago and in interviewing Sunis when he was manager yeah. and uh, you people like Andy Cole and Dwight York. I there. remember 2001 that would have been, wouldn't it? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.